Welcome to the Accident Incident Analysis Standardization Tutorial. Please note that the prerequisites to complete this standardization are the following. Read the guidance for analysts. Read in the Amsterdam Report, the Chapter 2, Factual Information, pages 13 to 22, and Chapter 4, Analysis, pages 39 to 46. In this presentation, we will review the components of the Threat and Error Management Model and its use as an observation and analysis tool. We will also review what the pilot competencies are, their definitions and observable behaviours, and the role of the competencies in the TEM model. We will conclude this part of the tutorial with some key points before putting into practice these concepts in a case study. What do pilots face every flight? Threats. Threats are events or errors that occur beyond the influence of the pilots, increase operational complexity and must be managed to maintain the margin of safety. For example, pilots may face bad weather, mountainous environment, malfunction, etc. The potential errors committed by other operational personnel represent a threat, for example, cabin crew call during the sterile cockpit phase. For the analysis, you will have to identify the threats that are contributing factors to the accident incident. A complete list of threats is provided in the guidance for analysts in order to support your analysis. What do pilots do as human beings? Errors. Errors are an action or inaction by an operational person that leads to deviations from organizational or the operational person's intentions or expectations. An error is generally unintentional, but in some cases it can be intentional. For the analysis, you will have to identify the errors that were contributing factors to the accident incident. A complete list of errors is provided in the guidance for analysts in order to support your analysis. What do pilots try to avoid during a flight? UAS. Undesired aircraft states are characterized by divergences from parameters normally experienced during operations. For example, aircraft position or speed deviations, misapplication of flight controls or incorrect systems configuration associated with a reduction in margins of safety. As you will notice, the guidance for analysts does not contain a list of UAS as it is impossible to provide an exhaustive list of all the potential UAS. For each threat, error and UAS, the question is, what is the response of the pilots? What is the outcome? For a threat, the best response is to anticipate or to recognize it. And the best outcome is when the pilots have a proper mitigation strategy. For example, during the departure briefing, the pilots anticipate or recognize stormy activities in the area of the airport. They assess the impact of the weather on the takeoff performance and they review the wind shear procedure. However, another response could be partial or no anticipation or recognition, and the outcome could be improper or no strategy, which may lead to an error. As an analyst, when reading a report, you have to ask yourself, what are the threats, and consequently, what is the response, what is the outcome? In this model, an error is the consequence of a mismanaged threat or the direct result of the pilot's action or inaction. Once an error is made, the best response is to detect this error and the best outcome is to correct it. However, the error might not be detected or partially detected and the outcome could also be a partial correction which could lead to a new error. If the situation worsens, the outcome could lead to a UAS. As an analyst, when reading a report, you have to ask yourself what are the errors and consequently what is the response and what is the outcome. When experiencing an UAS, the best response is to recognize and the best outcome is to recover. If the UAS is not recognized or recovered, this may lead to an additional error or to an incident or an accident. What do the pilots use to manage threats, errors and UAS? In the TEM model, the response is the pilot competencies. 
From a pure pilot perspective, the pilot competencies represent the individual and team countermeasures to manage the threats, errors and UAS. As an analyst, when reading a report, you have to ask yourself which competencies have been weak to manage the threats, errors and UAS, hence contributing factors to the accident incident. Let's now go through the competencies definitions and observable behaviours as listed in the guidance for analysts. According to the IKO definition hereafter, a competency is used to predict successful performance on the job. It must be observed through behaviours. The Competency Application of Knowledge, KNO, is described as the pilot's ability to proactively refer and apply relevant knowledge as the operational context evolves. Please have a look at the observable behaviours. The Competency Application of Procedures and Compliance with Regulations, APK, is described as identifies and applies appropriate procedures in accordance with published operating instructions and applicable regulations. Please have a look at the observable behaviours. Note the difference between application of procedures and compliance with regulations and application of knowledge with the following example. In a report, you read that the pilot monitoring omitted twice to perform a deviation callout due to an excessive rate of descent in the approach. If the report states that the pilot monitoring did not perform the callout because he considered that deviation callouts are pointless, the weak competency is application of procedures and compliance with regulations. But if the report states that the pilot monitoring was unable to recall the value of the excessive rate of descent generating the callout, then the competency is application of knowledge. The observable behaviours of the Aeroplane Flight Path Management Automation Competency reflect the best practices in regards to the automation policy, such as the use of the proper level of automation, taking action when things go unexpected, and understanding the flight mode annunciator at all time. The Aeroplane Flight Path Management Manual is defined as controls the aircraft flight path through manual flight, Please have a look at the observable behaviours. Flight 209er, you are cleared for takeoff. Roger. Huh? LA departure frequency 123.9er. Roger. Huh? Request vector. Over. What? Flight 209er, clear for vector 324. We have clearance, Clarence. Roger, Roger. What's our vector, Victor? Our radio clearance, over. Communication is the ability to understand and to be understood without ambiguity. However, communication is not always so simple. For good communication to happen, we need 1. A transmitter with the pertinent information to share 2. A receiver with cognitive resources to make him available to receive it. Please note that both the transmitter and the receiver need to be in the same context. Three we also need a clear message. It is commonly known that words count for only 10%. 40% of the message is transmitted by tone, 50% by body expression. Therefore, in our industry, phraseology and standard callouts are necessary and useful tools, but not sufficient. A good transmitter will check if his partner is ready to receive the message and will make sure the message is received and understood. He must be able to rephrase it if necessary. The competency communication is defined as communicates through appropriate means in the operational environment in both normal and non-normal situations. Please have a look at the observable behaviours. Leadership and teamwork is both the ability to influence others to contribute to a shared purpose and to collaborate to accomplish the goals of the team. The pilot has to adapt his leadership and teamwork to the operational context, taking into account the level of risk and the time available. In a situation combining high time pressure and high risk, the pilots should be very direct. For example, during an uncontained engine fire after takeoff, the pilots will have to be very decisive to ensure a timely return to the departing airport. When the risk is high but reasonable time is available, 
the pilots should implicate themselves and the different actors according to their competence and experience. This implication will maximize the relevance of the decision taken and enforce adherence. To illustrate what we just said, let's take a captain dealing with a diversion due to a sick passenger. The captain involves, implicates, the relief first officer to contact op center and the purser to perform the medical assessment before deciding on the adequate diversion airport. When the risk is low and when there is a time pressure, the best thing to do is to delegate, which can sometimes be challenging, especially for a young captain who may fear that things will not be done properly if he doesn't do it himself. Finally, when the risk is low and there is no time pressure, the best attitude is to manage by coaching and sharing experience. A typical example is when the first officer assesses the weather en route during the cruise flight phase and suggests possible courses of action to the captain. The competency LTW is defined as influences others to contribute to a shared purpose, collaborates to accomplish the goals of the team. Please have a look at the observable behaviors. To introduce the situation awareness and management of information competency, we use the image of a radar. The pilot is at the center of the radar. The circles from the center to the outer circles represent in the following order. The aircraft, the resources, ATC time, etc., and the environment. The scanning of the radar is represented in blue and is performed by the pilots in order to achieve situation awareness and management of the situation. Let's take a very simple example. The weather at destination is close to the minima. The pilot reads carefully the meter. He perceives. The pilot realizes that the approach may be challenging. He comprehends. The pilot seeks information about the alternate airports. He anticipates. But in some cases, the radar does not work efficiently. Under low workload, the pilot may be bored. In this case, the scanning pace will be lower. On the other hand, under high workload, the range may be reduced, in which case the outer circles may not be scanned. Both cases may lead to poor SAW. Please have a look at the observable behaviors. Before getting into the details of the problem solving and decision making competency, it is important to remind you of the decision-making process that pilots apply every day in the operational contexts. As an example, following the application of the procedure after an engine failure, the pilots must decide on the suitable airport to land the aircraft safely. They must choose between various options using the following cognitive process as described on the slide. The first step is to identify, meaning defining the issue. In our example, an aircraft with one engine out needs to land at a suitable airport. The second step is to assess, meaning identifying options and assessing them. Potential suitable airports, weather at those airports, operational minima, etc. The third step is to choose, meaning deciding from multiple options. The main difficulty at this point is to avoid any bias. For a captain, a good practice at this stage is to seek the first officer's opinion before deciding on an airport. The fourth step is to apply, meaning implementing the decision. In our example, flying to and landing at the selected airport. The last step is to verify, meaning to monitor the course of action and to adapt as necessary, ensuring that the landing at the selected airport remains relevant. Please have a look at the observable behaviors. The principles of workload management are define priorities, to organize task sharing, to manage task interruptions depending on the available resources and the situation. The final goal of the workload management is to optimize the use of available resources and to maintain workload capacity in order to ensure safe operations. Workload management is facilitated by applying task sharing using a suitable level of automation according to the flight context, anticipating future tasks and delegating. Poor workload management may lead to mistakes, a feeling of time pressure and the hurry up syndrome. Please have a look at the observable behaviors.
Previously, we've seen that the pilot competencies represent the individual and team countermeasures to manage the threats, errors, and UAS. As an analyst, when reading a report, you have to ask yourself which competencies have been weak to manage the threats, errors, and UAS, hence contributing factors to the accident or incident. Therefore, when considering the threats and errors and looking at the response and outcome, you will have to identify all the weak competencies that may be attributed to the captain and the first officer. As an example, the captain does not select the engine anti-ice because he has not detected the icing conditions. The first officer is aware of the icing conditions but doesn't dare to alert the captain on the need to switch on the engine anti-ice. In this situation, the captain showed a poor situation awareness and the first officer a poor leadership. The explanations provided in this tutorial are the basis for the Accident Incident Report Analysis. Remember the following key points. Identify threats, errors and undesired aircraft states. Analyze the response and outcome. Identify and assess the weak competencies as countermeasures. If you have any doubt, refer to the content of this course and the guidance for analysts.